the captain come with the ticket and all. I don't think he had. A, I don't know if he had a ticket, but he came and said, he said, "Hey, what's up, gangster?" So I'm like, "Gangster?" He like, "Yeah, man, you a gangster." I'm, I'm hearing you wasn't even in the house for one day and you already getting it on, you heard? You a gangster. So guess what, gangster? You going to the worst house in the building. I, I just get locked up. I go to Mall 5, right? So now, when I got there, it was, it was nighttime, so you know, I'm going right to sleep. So then on the daytime, I woke up around 10 o'clock. I didn't even go to breakfast that morning. So I woke up about 10 o'clock. So the next thing you know, I'm sitting on my bed. I'm looking at the phones. There was nobody on the phones. So I just went and jumped on the phone. Like 11 o'clock, 10.30 in the morning. So I went and jumped on the phone. So I'm on the phone for like five minutes. So then all of a sudden, some tall black come talking about, yo, bro, yo, I run the phones, man. Yo, you ain't signed the book, get off. So. Me, this is my first time on the island, and I've been hearing about all this thing. I'm thinking it's the first test. So first of all, I'm I'm, I'm a the you heard? You hmm. know what I'm saying? Because it sounded more like police to me, you heard? So he's like, I run the phone. You ain't signed the book. Get off the phone, you heard? So I act like I ain't hear him. I ain't give him my back or nothing. I was looking at him, but I just act like I ain't hear him. I ignored him. So the next thing you know, like five minutes later, police come and like, yo, Get the fuck off the phone, man. Black nigga. I'm like, I'm like, oh shit. So I'm telling my people, I'm like, yo, all right, I'm off. I said, y'all gotta get off this, bitch. So I got off the phone. So, so I went, sat on my bed. So I was thinking for a minute, like, damn, what the fuck just happened there, B, man? Motherfucking police coming in, nigga, telling. So I didn't know if that nigga, it looked like the nigga went and told the police, nigga, yo, this nigga don't want to get off the phone. You heard? And the nigga came and told me, get the fuck off the phone. So I right, fast forward. Now we, we go to Dinner Child. Dinner Child. Now you know how that Allen shit is. I ain't know the Allen politics. I ain't know that all the real niggas line up at the beginning of the line. You heard? When, um, when you go somewhere, so so like I'm on a so I'm on I'm on a child line. I'm on a, I'm like the second person on the line. So I'm on a double line. I'm on like the second person on the line. So the, the same nigga that told me to get off the phone earlier, um, he like he like two people behind me. So I hear the nigga say, "Yo, man, all these new niggas, man, in the front of the line, b." Now I didn't know he was talking to me. The only way I knew he was talking to me was because everybody that was around me started laughing. You heard? So I was like, oh shit, nigga. So I turned around, I was like, yo, who the fuck is you talking to, you bitch ass nigga? You heard? Freeze the froze the nigga up. The nigga ain't never expect that. Nigga's a bitch ass nigga. You heard? Mm. He ain't never expect that. You know what I'm saying? So boom. CO come. Shut up, stop talking in the hallway. You know, I didn't even know you were supposed to be talking in the hallway like that. You heard? So I'm like, fuck out of here, bitch ass nigga. Who the fuck you talking to? You heard? So he freezed up. He didn't really say nothing. So the CO says, says something to me. CO chick says, yo, shut up in the hallway, ain't no talking. No, no, no. So boom, now we go to chat. I'm dumb mad. Cause I'm like, yeah, this is it right here. I'm gonna have to put it in on this nigga, man. Fuck. I ain't even been here a whole day, you heard? But the real reason why I feel like the niggas was coming at me, because I was fresh as a daisy. And this was at the time when everybody was getting robbed, you heard? The only way you wasn't getting robbed is if you knew niggas or you knew how to handle it. So even niggas that I came in with, they was kicking, they done kicked their shit off already with niggas, you heard? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I had the war rejoin, everything was brand new, you know what I'm saying? Because that's how niggas was on, you know, niggas was robbing every day, you know what I'm saying? Getting fresh every day. So basically, I, I had the brand new war rejoin, brand new uptown on with the purple check, brand new Midorian jeans on. I had, a, I, had a, I had a champion sweater on, you heard? So mm. everything is brand new, I'm fresh as a day. And I'm by myself. I ain't get locked up with nobody. I'm no code defense or nothing. And I ain't coming here with nobody. I'm holding down by myself. So boom. So that's what I really feel. That's why they was like, like niggas was like, like he was trying to like pick at me, to like to see what niggas like trying to see where I'm at. So you know the next step, you know they gonna try to move on a nigga. You know what I'm saying? So boom, because they had a little click in there. You know they had a click in there that was that was in there for like. 
that the COs was keeping in there because you know how them new jack houses is. The, the COs got, they, keep, they pick their favorites. They keep niggas in there, you heard? And them niggas that they keep in there be robbing niggas and they be they be in there um, ca- causing havoc, you heard? Mm-hmm. Keep away with murder, you know what I'm saying? And then they don't, they don't, they don't really be, they don't really be putting in no work or nothing. They like they don't really be cutting niggas or getting caught for um fighting and all that. They they get the herbs and all that to do shit so they can stay in the house. You heard? And rob niggas all day. So now, basically, so basically, I get back to the dorm. We get back to the dorm. I go, I don't know. You know, you 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 remember the Midoriya jeans? Vaguely. Did you talk about a nine? Talking about nine one? Yeah, nine one. The Midoriya jeans. They used to, they used to have like, like, like metal little straps on them and pieces on them, and everybody was started rocking them at one time. You heard? Mm. Anyway, it, the Midoriya jeans had this like this little metal plate on the on the pocket, like that was like that was put on the pocket on shit. So I always, I, when I got locked up, I was like, yeah, I'm glad I had these shits on. Cause this was my only weapon. It had a little metal plate on it, and I took them shits off my jeans, and I went in the bathroom. As soon as I got back from um chow that day, I went back. I went in the I went in the bathroom. I started scraping up, scraping that, that shit down into like a little razor. You heard? Mm. So now I go back and sit on my bed, waiting at the dudes, looking at the dude. I only really had people one dude, but he rolling with some dudes. They, they, they all got their beds in the front where the, where the phones is at, you heard? Mm-hmm. And they all, they all eating together, they all laughing and joking together, they doing everything together. So I know they all together even though they all trying to act like I only got beef with this one nigga, you know what I'm saying? And the nigga was from the Bronx, you heard? Come to find out, I didn't know at the time, but he was from the Bronx, this dude, that, mm-hmm. that, that I got beef with or, or whatever. So I'm sitting on my bed, I'm looking at them niggas, so now they're they not paying me no attention. They like... They, 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 they rocking me to sleep on that jailhouse shit because, you know, I really don't know what's really going on, like how that how the rocking niggas to sleep. I'm waiting for niggas to come straight at me, you know what I'm saying? Nah, mm-hmm. these niggas, this, I'm in the era of 91, 92. They were sending a lot of um doges at niggas, you heard? Yeah. A lot of niggas got cut by doges in those times, you heard? And, right. and, I, and, I, and I fell victim. First day on the island. First time ever locked up on the island. Niggas cut me on the back. So boom, I'm sitting on my bed looking at them niggas in the front. No nope, nigga acting like the nigga that, that that said all that shit in the hallway. Nigga acting like he ain't got no problems with me. Rocking me to sleep on that jailhouse shit. Boom. Next thing you know, a, I just feel a nigga, feel a nigga on me. Like it's like a nigga jumped on me and threw me in a yoke. That's what it felt like. But what it, what it really was, a nigga went to my neck, put the razor to my neck. It was going to try to say some shit like, don't move. But when I, as soon as I felt somebody on me, I jumped up and turned around. It was some Spanish dude. Told you, nigga. You heard? Niggas, I got beef with his butt. You heard? Mm. I start hitting the nigga. Boom, bop, bop, bing, bop. Now, you remember the alley, the, the, the lockers is on the floor. You heard? Mm-hmm. Pop, popping that nigga. Bing, bop, boom. Knocked the nigga over the lockers. Everything going. I'm beating the shit out of this nigga. Word of my mother, police come out of nowhere. Stop fighting, stop fighting, screaming. Stop fighting. I ain't stop fighting, I'm whipping this nigga ass. Word of my mother, then the police smacked the shit out of me, guys. Word of my mother, smacked the shit out of me, you heard? That's how them niggas was giving it up back then. I'm about to pop off on the police. That nigga said, that nigga looked at me, he's like, go ahead, I dare you. But I was, I was, I was scared, but I wasn't scared of him or popping off because in the street, I fought in men and all that before. You know what I'm saying? It was more, I was scared. He, he, he put me in my place by scaring me, you heard? Yeah, you know niggas was kids, my nigga. We was kids. Them niggas was grown ass motherfucking men. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So he slapped me, he's like, yo, when I tell you to stop fighting, nigga, you stop fighting. Get the fuck out there on the wall. So I was like, I got out there on the wall. I don't even know I'm cut yet, yet, cause it's in my back. So I'm like, oh, all right, I go out on the wall. You know they had them little handprint shits out on the wall. Mm-hmm. I go out there, I get on the handprints and all that. So boom, niggas like, I hear a female CO come out. She looking at me, her. She goes, oh wait a minute, he's cut, he's cut. Soon as she said that, I start feeling the blood down my back. So I'm like, 
oh shit so they closed the, they closed the um doors and all that and it, real quick so they, they like so i start flipping out you know i'm bugging out yo a word a word so I, i'm kicking on the doors and all that but i ain't doing nothing you heard? and then i hear i hear the co's like the co nigga telling the, the, lady, the lady co yo just let him vent just let him vent you heard you know what i'm saying mm. oh because they think all that shit happened from the, you know from the morning you know what i'm saying like or from the daytime you heard you know what i'm saying you know how them niggas know what's gonna happen or what's gonna go on because the nigga that i got the nigga that i got problems with is they pet you know what i'm saying mm. he ain't going nowhere but i don't know this at the time to make a long story short i go to the infirmary i'm in the infirmary they, they stitch me up. I got about five stitches in my back. A little, a little joint. Not nothing crazy. Made nothing major. Some petty shit. So boom, they patch me. They patch me up. So all of a sudden, I'm sitting there. The captain come with the ticket and all. No, I don't think he had. A, I don't know if he had a ticket, but he came and said, he said, "Hey, what's up, gangster?" So I'm like, "Gangster." He like, "Yeah, man, you a gangster." I'm, I'm hearing you wasn't even in the house for one day, and you already getting it on. You heard? You a gangster. So guess what, gangster? You going to the worst house in the building. So I'm like, worst house in the building? He's like, yeah, they gave up. They said, you had these two razors right here. They gave up two razors, really one razor. The razor that I guess the kid had and the um the, the, the metal piece that I had, you heard? Hmm. They, they, they said, they said yeah, they said, you a gangster, man. You know what I'm saying? And they said that you had these two razors right here and you cut the kid. Now, I never got a chance to cut the kid, right? When I hit the kid, the kid was Spanish. So when I hit him, he fell over the locker. You know how like the Spanish niggas, they had, he had a long welt, you heard? Mm -hmm. So, you know, back then they characterized anything as a cutting, you heard? They, they, they was happy to, to, to throw that on niggas. Yo, yeah, you cut it, nigga, yeah. So I was like, man, whatever, man. I ain't, he was like, you going to the worst house. The nigga that I got it on with, he ain't go nowhere, you heard? Mm -hmm. The, nigga, the niggas that sent them, they ain't go nowhere. They, they in the house. So they sent me to the worst house in the building. They telling me I'm going to the worst house in the building. Now, you remember Miss Calabras, right? Hell yeah. Yeah, so Miss Calabras is the one escorting me. My first time on the island, I don't know nothing. All I know is I see that fat ass. So I'm like, oh, all right. So she scoring me to the joint. So she scoring me to the nine. Small talk. She getting me in there. So now as soon as I get there, that's when I see, I see Steve-O and them niggas jump on, the, on one window. Steve-O and his, his fake cousin, Gargamel. That's another story. I'm going to tell you about that story because when I went on the Brook, I went on the Brooklyn side for a couple of days. Like, I, I called myself, I thought I was I thought I was on some extra real shit. I was trying to be on some extra real shit. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, go, I went on the Brooklyn side for three days in the nine at one time. You heard? The whole three days I was fighting, lads. The whole three days, you heard? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Oh, the whole three days I was fighting. The niggas, the niggas was asking me, what the fuck you come over here for? You heard? You know what I'm saying? You no, know, because I was on the other side. The niggas know I was on the other side. You heard? They, so they thought I was coming over to infiltrate, but it really wasn't that. So now look, as soon as I get there, niggas, niggas jump on the get, um, jump on the windows like wolves. They looking at me. They like, yeah. So like I told you, I, only thing I got, I ain't got nothing. I just got locked up. So. It was my first day locked up, so all I got on is what I got on. My War Ridge, my um, my, my brand new um uptowns and this and that. As soon as I walk in the house, Brooklyn niggas stepping to me. I'm talking about I ain't even get to my bed yet. Miss Calabras is with me. She like she walking in my house. So you know she's a kind of like a diversion. Like niggas was on half of the niggas was on me, and half of the niggas was talking to her. You know what I'm saying? So basically, when she left out. That's when niggas was like, yo, where you from? Where you from, home? Where you from, shorty? You know, I'm, I'm so young in the face looking. Niggas is calling me shorty. So they're like, where you from, shorty? Where you from? So I'm like, from the Bronx. So niggas like, all right, all right, all right. So boom. So short, yo, I ain't even get a chance to make up my bed or nothing. A Brooklyn nigga, short Brooklyn nigga named Low, he like this. Yo, my man want to shoot five for your jacket. You heard? I ain't even make up my bed, last. Niggas like, you, I want to shoot five for your jacket. So... I already know the program. I'm keeping it real. This was on the this was on the Brooklyn side or on the Bronx side? This on the Bronx side, you heard? All right. Because as soon as I got there, the CEO was like, where you from? I was like, the Bronx. He's like, yo, I got a I got a Bronx side, an uptown side, and I got a Brooklyn side. You wanna go on the Bronx side? I said, yeah, I wanna go on the Bronx side, you heard? Cause I figure I know somebody, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
boom. But when I went in there, I ain't know nobody. I knew, ni- you know how like you know niggas from the street, but you don't know niggas? Because mm-hmm. I was a nigga like that. I was a young nigga like, I knew who niggas was in the hood, around the hood. So, like, I seen a few niggas that I knew by name, but I didn't know them, so I didn't even act like I knew them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I just played it like I played it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I came in. And like I told you, I'm the youngest nigga there. I'm 16. Everybody else is 21, 22, 19. Everybody else was older than what they were supposed to be. Because that's back at the time when niggas was playing adolescent so they could Debo. You heard? Mm-hmm. Well, that's where all their mans was at. That's where all their peoples was at. You know what I'm saying? That's where their co-defendant was at. So niggas had a whole hundred reasons why they wanted to be an adolescent. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't that they were scared to go to adults. It was just that niggas rocked out better in the adolescent or that half of the niggas just left. You know what I'm saying? So that, that, niggas want to go back to adolescent. Niggas want to go where that shit is fun. Yup. So it was a lot of niggas that was that was mad older that wasn't even supposed to be there, but they was there. So boom, niggas stepped to me, yo, what's up, man? Oh, my man wants to shoot five for your jacket. I walked straight to the back. Now the nigga they got me shooting five with is some big diesel nigga. You could tell that like, this nigga lived in jail, you heard? <laughs> he was in jail from a kid, you heard? You know what I'm saying? Nigga mad diesel like Mike Tyson, you heard? The nigga resembled Mike Tyson. So I'm still like, so the nigga coming up to me with his arms out, like, nah, shorty, I don't want to fight you, shorty. I don't want to fight you, shorty. I don't want to fight you. He got that smile on his face. You heard? But the real reason why he didn't really want to fight me, because like I told you, I was a shorty. He would have destroyed me to tell you the truth, but he seen that I was still ready to fight the nigga. So he had that smile on his face like, yo, this little nigga still ready to fight and knowing I'll fuck his little ass up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he just wanted to see if he was going to come out that war rich. Exactly. So boom, I didn't come out that warrior, but they didn't know that they didn't know under my warrior, my shirt got ripped up during the fight. So basically, I didn't have no shirt under my shit. All I all I had was was my, was, was I was naked under my under the jacket. And, and when I took off my jacket, they seen that I was cut. They was like, "Oh shit, shorty, you got cut." I was like, "Yeah." They was like, "They was like, where you got cut at?" Cause you know, you know, that's that shit is big back then. They like, "Where you got cut at, shorty?" I'm like, "Yo, I got cut in Mar Five. They like, "You got cut in a new jacket, house, shorty? I don't, who cut you?" I was like, "Yo, niggas sent the Doja. B. I had beef with some niggas. Niggas sent the Doja. They was like, "Oh shit, shorty, you ready to get busy? And you got, you just came from the infirmary?" No, no, no. I'm like, "Yeah, B. But no." So then, the nigga that was running the house named Preem, he was coming out the shower. When all the Brooklyn niggas and everybody, because first the Brooklyn niggas was talking to me, because like I told you, they trying to get me, you know what I'm saying? They trying to get me for my jacket and shit. So boom, but they, I wasn't giving it up, you know what I'm saying? So boom, so now the nigga Preem come out the shower. I didn't know he was the man, but I could tell he was the man, because when he came out the shower, everybody, everything freeze. Everybody stopped talking. Everybody let him talk. So he was like, yo, shorty, where you from? I was like, the Bronx. He was like, you keeping it real? I was like, yeah, I'm keeping it real. He's like, yeah, good. Maybe you could be my son. I said, I ain't nobody's son. He said, chill, shorty, I like you. Don't let me have to blow you up, you heard? So I was about to be like, man, listen, man. But I, for some reason, I knew the nigga was the man because everybody, the way everybody was looking at him and waiting for my response. So I was like, I was like, all right, I held my tongue with that one because cause, cause cause when I came through, I came through on some shit. I ain't letting nobody play me type shit, you heard? You know what I'm saying? I had that, I had that wrong uh, I had the wrong mentality you know what I'm saying I didn't know what to expect so I was I I, I was like fuck that any anything everything I heard about the Allen anybody try to play me I'm, I'm I'm going out that's all I know you know what I'm saying so basically I held my tongue with that one so boom a nigga from the Bronx named Stacy called me I was like yo you from the, where you from in the X I'm like such and such such and such he's like yo I'm from Forest come over here boom it's a bed right here so I, I moved my bed to right next to him. So boom, we, we kicking it all night, getting familiar, everything. But yo, 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 last. My first three weeks in the house on the uptown side, I'm fighting almost every day. But I'm fighting on some organized shit because Mar- the reason what made Mar 9 so official and made it so different than all them other houses was all the COs was official. Like you could go to the CO and be like, yo, I want to shoot five minutes. And the CO come out, the nigga, I forgot the nigga's name, the black nigga with the waves from 103rd. He used to come out with his waves. He'd come out with the big stick. And he'd be like, yo, no rustling, only hands. When I tell you to stop, stop. 
and after it, it's over, it's over. So boom, being that I was the youngest nigga in there, I was, I'm keeping official. I wasn't cutting niggas and all that at that time. You know what I'm saying? That was my first big. Everybody in there had a body. So them niggas had time them the Allen. Them niggas was cutting niggas, stabbing niggas. That's what they was on. You know what I'm saying? I was fighting niggas. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really had to cut nobody because, you know, I was the young nigga. And after a while, niggas, niggas respected me for being a young nigga. I ain't, I, I you know, once I, once I got down with a few five minutes and I was doing my thing, Niggas gave me my props for that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So then, boom. I'm not what They had a nigga in there, had a nigga in there washing drawers. You know, back in those days, it was a position to be played. Either you was a dick rider, either you was holding it down, either you was a dick rider, either you was a herd washing drawers and doing shit for niggas, or, or you was um, or, or, a straight doja. You know what I'm saying? And everybody played, they, everybody had a position to play. You know what I'm saying? But Cream made sure that every, the house was ran on some family shit. Because I ain't gonna lie, when the Brooklyn niggas, because the Brooklyn niggas used to always be together. You know, Brooklyn niggas stick together. When, 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 on, on, under those circumstances, under locked up circumstances, you know what I'm saying? And basically, it was time, Cream used to call meetings. He used to be like, yo, everybody in the day room, everybody. And it was live niggas in there. It was niggas in there that probably could have got at niggas, but it was it was it was the respect that niggas had for niggas. You know what I'm saying? So he used to call meetings sometimes. He'd be like, like sometimes the Brooklyn niggas used to be playing so too much. You know how Brooklyn niggas do. Niggas be on it, man. You know what I'm saying? So um, niggas be playing too much. So the premier be like, yo, everybody in the day room, everybody, man, everybody. So he'd be like, yo, man, niggas is getting loose in the spot, man. You heard? I send niggas out of here, B. You heard? Niggas, niggas sweet. I send niggas out of here, B. And he, and he wasn't just talking to Brooklyn niggas. He was talking to everybody, you heard? He was talking to even niggas that was popping with him. You know what I'm saying? But he he had he had a he had a he had a mean Bronx team in, up in there. You know what I'm saying? And he had me, he had old Red, he had Bam Bam. Like, like the time when Saquon was talking about. It seemed like he was talking about after I was there, 92 and all that. Because when Bam Bam had it, because Bam Bam, I was there with Bam Bam there. We was all under Prem. And then when, when Prem left, Prem, Prem went to adults. You know what I'm saying? I was there when Prem went to adults. We, we was all sad when Prem went to adults. Because they, they, they it, yo, it was, yo, the fucking warden, everybody came to Mar 9. We was the worst house in the building. You heard? Worse than all the, all the style houses. All the houses, and 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 really, it was really one side, my side, the uptown side, the Bronx side. We was the wildest house because the Brooklyn side wasn't wilding. The Brooklyn side, they was chilling over there. All them niggas was over there was people. You heard? If you if you wasn't people, you wasn't rocking over there. You heard? You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The side that I was on. It wasn't no herbs like that. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no herbs like that. It was one or two herbs, niggas that were washing drawers and all that. It wasn't no herbs like that. It was people. Because every, niggas was getting on the jack. And the reason why the house was ran like it was was because no one person was coming down to the house taking over no jacks. See, and on the other side, if a live nigga came from two upper or a live nigga came from the bing and came to went to the Brooklyn side, they could have took the Jacks. They probably could have took the Jacks from Steve O or Popcorn or one of them the way that they was rolling over there because they was rolling the regular way. You know what I'm saying? On the on on, on the strength shit. You know what I'm saying? But when you when you when you got organ when you got your shit organized, when you got niggas rolling for a cause, you gon' got you got more power. You got more people people that, that fuck with you, that believe in you. A lot of niggas ain't like Steve O and them niggas over there. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about in the house and out the house. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I, I think Steve O, I don't know, if, I, I don't know for a fact, but I think he got he got accused of cutting op. I don't know if you knew op or you heard of op. Dark skin op that was a low life from Brooklyn. I think he was from Brownsville too. You heard? Op was in there with me. And that's what that's what that's what started the, the uptown and the Brooklyn side beef. I mm. was from because remember I told you it was a lot of Brooklyn niggas in my house. Now the Brooklyn dudes, the Brooklyn dudes didn't fuck the Brooklyn dudes that was in my house didn't fuck with the Brooklyn dudes on the other side. You heard? 
they were they were the niggas was on their own different type of time. And the Brooklyn dudes that was in my house, every, they was from everywhere: East New York, Brownsville, Best Style, all that. I remember, I remember all of them. You know what I'm saying? One day, um, bar boxing bar that, sh- that had that shit with Mano. One day he got it to he got it to um with this dude named Jose. You heard? Shit was crazy. We all lay that night before you know before niggas go to bed nigga, in the dorm. Niggas be snapping and shit, bugging out. Before niggas go to bed Cause it's boring Nothing to do You heard Boom boom So everybody up snapping and shit So this nigga Jose I don't know if it's Jose Harris Or regular Jose But This nigga He was a grimy nigga He came out the bank He from Brooklyn I don't remember what part he was from He, he was part of the, the Brooklyn team But He was real quiet He was real different than everybody You know how mostly everybody is loud You know who they is or who you know niggas is who they is if they gonna rob a nigga they gonna rob a nigga if they gonna if they if they talking about this they talking about this but this nigga was not like that he was quiet he always scheming but every time something like when something pop off he always trying to cut somebody stab somebody like it don't even be a situation like that but he was always the one trying to do that shit like like say a nigga get into an argument or get into a fight or a little scuffle and they peoples, Jose, you'll see Jose trying to sneak up, trying to cut the nigga, and that niggas and peoples will be have to be like, yo, chill, man, chill, oh, chill. You know what I'm saying? So he was always like that. That's why I'm, I'm just trying to give you a, 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 a picture of how a nigga was. Like, he was a quiet dude. I, he was grimy and sneaky. You know what I'm saying? But he, I, I'm giving to him he was official. So boom, one day, him and him and we all um, snapping that night, everybody, and boss said something to him or something. And that nigga... That nigga got mad real quick, like he ain't no he don't, he ain't no plain type nigga. So he he got mad at Ball real quick. So and Ball is a professional boxer. So Ball was like, and Ball is short and little. And Ball was like, man, I don't give a fuck about you getting mad and shit or whatever. You know? So he tried to he tried to rush Ball, but but all the Brooklyn niggas jumped in the way because they was like, nah nah nah, hold nah, chill chill. Cause they didn't want that to happen. They didn't want Ho and Ball to get it on. Cause niggas respected Ball like that, and niggas respected Ho like that and for different reasons. And and, and they was from all, both from Brooklyn, so all the Brooklyn niggas definitely jumped up in the middle of that shit. Like nah, nah, hell no, hell no, hell no. So they deaded that shit for that night. So that next morning, nigga Ball went in the motherfucking bathroom to brush his teeth. The nigga Jose snuck in the bathroom and blew Ball. Yo. Run out the bathroom. This nigga ball come out the bathroom. Run to the run to his, his his bed. Put his sneakers on. This nigga Jose run in the back the day room. Um, lock the door to the um to the TV day room or whatever. Well, he the only one in there. This nigga ball so mad, so crazy. This nigga runs, kicks the window open of the of that day room. You know how hard and thick that glass is. Hey. That nigga kicked that shit. Until it broke open. He climbed in the window. Knocked that nigga Jose out. Didn't knock him out and woke him up. Didn't knock him out and, and knock him out again. Didn't knock him out and woke him up. Didn't knock him out and, and, and again. Didn't knock him out and woke him up. Yo, I ain't never see a nigga do no shit like this. In the, in the rage like this. I was like, the whole house was stunned. Nobody moved. Everybody was by their bed. Everybody watch that shit from the from they bed in the fucking TV room, and you know how far that shit is. You heard? And yo, niggas was watching that shit like a, a movie. That nigga, I, I was like, I, I knew that nigga ball with the truth, but I I been knew ball with the truth because he had a couple of five minute fights too with niggas, and every nigga he fought was way bigger than him, and he was knocking niggas out. So then, remember I told you I was fighting niggas too, right? Mm-hmm. So oh. One day I had a five, this is like after my second or third five minute fight, right? I fucked the nigga up. Some shit came out of me. I was fighting, I, when I was fighting under pressure, I was fucking niggas up. I just word of my mom, I had like five, five minutes. I won all five minutes. Except for the, I'm gonna keep it official. Except for the one when I went on the Brooklyn side. And I'm gonna get to that one. 